Well, good morning and welcome to Northwest Free Methodist Church here at Flexion Ranch. We're so excited that you've decided to join us this Sunday morning. Um, we have a few announcements before we get started in singing. Um, the first is that we are having a Mission and Vision uh, meeting today at Elevate. Um, and so uh, if you're interested in what we're talking about, Mission and Vision of the Church, we're going to be meeting uh, here uh, at Elevate Coworking at noon. And so we're going to be talking about that. Um, so grab your lunch as you head over. We'll uh, be talking and then um, talking about our mission and vision. Um, the next is Rediscovering Jesus. Uh, we continue to have that Bible study happening here on Wednesdays. Yeah, it's in the celebration room <coughs> on the back door, Wednesdays at 7 p.m. And we are having some really good discussions. But if you don't want to talk, you don't have to. I won't make you <coughs> um, So encourage you to check that out. Please. They're doing a great job. I have not been able to attend yet. I, know I plan on attending this one. We have time. watched some really good movie clips because we're using clips from movies about Jesus to jumpstart discussion and some of them are quite interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. um, and then the last announcement is giving. There are offering plates at the back of the room. You can also give online at northwestfmc.org so give. And we give out of abundance of what God has blessed us with and out of generosity. And so if you want to give to the ministry here, those are ways that you can give. Our call to worship uh, this morning is Psalm 147, verses 5 through 7. It says, Great is our Lord, and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. Gabe is going to lead us in singing this morning. Good morning, everyone. As you can see, I'm a little bit alone up here. Lydia um, is not here with us today. I believe she had to go into surgery um, over the weekend. So I ask that you all, you know, keep her in your thoughts and prayers and make sure that she gets through a speedy recovery and that she joins us next week, hopefully. Um, but yeah, we're here. <laughs> I invite you all to stand if you're able as we worship on this Sunday morning.
Show us your power and your glory. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. As we enter our, our song of prayer, I ask that you take whatever position is comfortable for you, whether it be standing, kneeling, or sitting. <coughs> We are stirred on the outside, the outside looking in. This is where grace begins. We were hungry, we were thirsty, with nothing left to give. What a shame that we went in. Just when
We ask you to be with us this morning as we continue to worship you through communion and through the word. We just ask that your presence be here this morning. Make it, make us aware of it. In your name we pray. Amen. So this morning is uh, Communion Sunday. We celebrate on the first of every uh, first Sunday of every month. Um, I will not be serving it since I still have a cough. I have asked Lance to uh, go and serve it out to um, everyone. Um, but we will begin with uh, the liturgy and then take communion um, together. Yep. Uh, everyone is uh, available to take communion here. Um, we do not. Uh, you do not have to be a member. Um, we j just ask that you have uh, sincerity of heart. Um, and uh, our communion, uh, the elements are gluten free. So if you have gluten intolerance, you don't have to worry about it. Um, and uh, so we all uh, that is available to you. Everything is gluten free um, for you. Um, sorry, let me just get. The liturgy open for me. Uh, okay, I'm just going to read about that. You who truly and earnestly repent of your sins, who live in love and peace with your neighbors, and who intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking in His holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and humbly kneeling, make your honest confession to Almighty God. We sincerely repent, and we are genuinely sorry for all wrongdoing and every failure to do the things we should. Our hearts are grieved, and we acknowledge that we are hopeless without your grace. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us, cleanse us, give us strength to serve and please you in newness of life, and to honor and praise your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us continue our confession as we pray together the prayer of Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. O Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who with great mercy has promised forgiveness to all who turn to you with hearty repentance and true faith, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from our sins, make us strong and faithful in all goodness, and bring us to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for inner cleansing together. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. It is always right and proper and our moral duty that we should, at all times and in all places, give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the inhabitants of heaven, we honor and adore your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. We do not come to this, your table, O merciful Lord, with self-confidence and pride, trusting in our own righteousness. But we trust in your great and many mercies. We are not worthy to gather the crumbs from under your table. But you, O Lord, are unchanged in your mercy, and your nature is love. Grant us, therefore, God of mercy, God of grace, so to eat at this your table, that we may receive in spirit and in truth the body of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and the merits of his shed blood, so we may live and grow in his likeness, and being washed and cleansed through his most precious blood, we may evermore live in him and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who gave in love your only Son, Jesus Christ, 
who suffered death upon the cross for our redemption, who by his sacrifice offered once for all, did provide a full, perfect, and sufficient atonement for the sins of the whole world. We come now to your table in obedience to your Son, Jesus Christ, who in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we humbly ask, and grant that we, receiving this bread and this cup, as he commanded in the memory of his passion and death, may partake of his most blessed body and blood. And then I was betrayal. Jesus took bread, and when he gave it thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In like manner, after supper, he took the cup. And when he gave given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of this, all of you, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you, preserve your soul and body under everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed upon him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. <coughs> the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you, preserve your soul and body unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you, and be thankful. Uh, I'm going to have Lance now take the communion elements up to you.
benediction for communion. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God, and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be yours now and forever. Amen. <coughs> I'm sorry, I, um, I am still getting over this cough. Um, I am thankful for doctors who can prescribe uh, antibiotics and give me on the meds. Um, so I appreciate uh, any of you who have been praying for me, um, and uh, I'm better, just not 100% there yet. Um, so this morning we are uh, starting just a two-week uh, conversation on uh, the, the uh, verse from Psalm 34, 8. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in Him. Um, and so we're going to talk about what it means to have um, a God who is good. Um, uh, this... This verse comes from a psalm, Psalm 34, um, that is a bit unique in the psalms. Um, it's, a, it's not a thanksgiving psalm, it's not a request psalm, um, it's not a, a praise psalm, um, it's, uh, and, it, and the psalmist isn't angry with God in this one, it's just a testimony about what God has done. Um, and so the first three verses of the psalm, uh, I will praise the Lord. This is Psalm 34, 8. Taste and see that the Lord is good, of the joys of those who take refuge in him. And then 1 through 3, I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak his praises. I will boast only in the Lord. Let all of our helpless take heart. Come, let us tell the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name together. Um, so notice, I will praise. It starts off with all these I will statements. Um, this is an expression of how most, most likely David is responding to something that God has done for him. It's a testimony to the goodness of God. Um, it's, it's also a bit of a, uh, in Hebrew, it, it uses a lot of the, the Hebrew alphabet in a weird arrangement, um, trying to show from like A to Z, um, kind of like Amazon's logo, they have everything from A to Z. Um, or when you walk into Walmart, and you're like, I need this thing, and I can get my groceries and baby food and, and the $2 deal that I didn't need, but I saw it and I had to have it anyways. Um, anyway, um, uh, or recently I walked into Lowe's and there was body wash uh, at the front uh, near, the, near the checkout lanes, which, you know, probably a good spot to put it in Lowe's for guys, but um, anyway, this, this psalm, the 34th psalm, is a bit about talking about it's kind of an A to Z about how God is good. Um, and it goes over why God is good and how his goodness helps those who fear him and love him. Um, and so <coughs> this psalm is simply a praise towards God's goodness and what God has done for David and what God it will do for others if you find refuge in him. Um, one of the problems that we have uh, in today's society is that we have often experienced God through people. The hands and feet of Christ have often been the hands and feet that have oppressed and exploited others. Try as we might uh, to forget the part, that part of Christian history, it has certainly been the case that Christians have misapplied scripture and the teachings of Jesus and oppressed and exploited people when they shouldn't. So if we are to taste and see that God is good, what does good mean? How can we have a good God when there is so much hurt within our world, within our churches, and from the church? And so this week and next week, I want to talk about God being good and then talk about how the church can be good. Um, a lot of this is book, based off a book called A Church Called Tov. <coughs> which I would, I would recommend for anyone who wants to be part of a church that is good. Um, so let's start off with the word good. The word uh, in Hebrew is tov. 
um, T-O-V. Um, and this word is used over 500 times uh, in, in the Bible. It's, it's used more than that. Um, but in the New Testament, it's a different word because it's Greek. Um, and it's used for significant things like Psalm 34, 8, taste and see that the Lord is good. It's also used uh, for not so significant things uh, like Proverbs uh, 17, 1, better a dry crust eaten in peace than a house filled with feasting and conflict. Um, so the word tov there is the better. So tov a dry crust eaten in peace than a house filled with fasting, feasting and conflict. Um, it would be really bad if it was fasting and conflict. Um, and so, you know, this proverb, um, some of you can probably testify to the validity of it. If you've ever, ever been in a restaurant that has created conflict, you go, you know, the food was good, but the atmosphere was terrible. Um, so what does it mean that God is tov, or God is good? Um, uh, one of the first connections in scriptures for where God and goodness uh, get connected is Exodus 33, 19 through 23. And it says, uh, the Lord replied, I will make all my goodness pass before you. <coughs> or, I will make all my tov pass before you, and I will call out my name, Yahweh, before you. For I show mercy to anyone I choose, and I will show compassion to anyone I choose. But you may not look directly at my face, for no one may see me and live. The Lord continued, Look, stand near me on this rock. As my glorious presence passes by, I will hide you in the crevice of the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand and let you see from behind. My face will not be seen. So in this passage, um, it is the goodness or the toe of God that passes before Moses, and the name Yahweh and goodness are linked forever in the mind of Israel. For Moses, God's goodness shows up in plenty of ways. The pillar of cloud and fire which guide the Israelites through the desert, manna from heaven which feeds the Israelites in the desert, and spring and the and the water spring from the rock, which gives drink to the Israelites in the desert. Throughout the story connecting God and Moses, God's goodness is the cause of the saving of the Israelites and provision, even it, when they disobey God. God is connected to goodness because how He ties His name to good when He reveals Himself to Moses. God does this. God says. In, verse, in that first verse, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will call out my name, Yahweh. Um, the question for us is, um, how do we connect God's goodness? Is it just action, or is it just a state of being? Is God just good, or does God do good? Um, sometimes we combine holiness and goodness together into one aspect of God's character. Uh, but God's goodness is often in action towards us as humans. Um, I think one of the most the f most famous psalm, the 23rd psalm, is about God's goodness. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, and I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths. Bring an honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. For you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff comfort, protect, and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Right, that, that last verse, surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me. God is good, and he chases us down with his toe so that we can experience good. It's not just that he wants to save us, he wants good for us. The story of Israel is that they will enter into a land flowing with milk and honey. Um... <coughs> Uh, 
in our um, modern time, uh, we don't often connect that idea. Um, uh, when I was hurt as a kid, I was like, why would you want a land flowing with milk and honey? Like, yeah, sure, they're, they're good, they're nice, they're, it's yummy, but like, what, why would I want that? Um, and so what God is promising it to Israel is a place with rich food that is endless. Um, the modern way to maybe say it is that enter a land flowing with mac and cheese and Reese's peanut butter cups. Um, God doesn't want just Israel to survive, right? It's not, um, it's not lettuce and water, it's milk and honey. Um, and so he wants Israel to thrive. And so the command, or the, the psalmist urge to taste and see that God is good, is maybe a little more literal than we might assume. God wants us to not, not just have good things for us mentally or spiritually, but physically. And he has provided those things for us. It's spelled out from the beginning of Genesis that the creation that God has created is good. It is tov. The whole created order is pointing to God's goodness, to God's tov. And his whole design for the world is to be tov, to be good. There is something that moves us beyond just human emotions when we see a truly good thing. It can be a simple, it can be a simple good thing. Sunrise, good golf swing, great ballet performance, good piece of music. When things are done well and we share in the goodness of this world, they are often as satisfying at a level beyond just our personal things. They sometimes transcend to this other level. This is further testified by Jesus that God is not in the habit of giving bad gifts. So Matthew 7, 7 through 11. Keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find it. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives and everyone who seeks finds. And everyone who knocks, the door will be open. You parents, if your children ask for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone instead? Or if they ask for a fish, do you give them a snake? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Heavenly Father give good gifts to those who ask Him? Right? If my children come to me and say, Dad, we want chocolate chip cookies. Um, it would be very wrong and not good of me, not tov of me, to purposely swap the sugar and the salt, right? To, to have uh, these terrible, terrible cookies, uh, to swap the measurements. God is not purposely switching up the salt and the sweet to get you. God is not angry with you. In fact, he loves you so much, he leaves the 99 to find the one. <coughs> the goodness of God knows no boundaries because God himself is goodness. And part of this goodness is what we're told to do by Jesus. What brings God's approval? How does God call us good when we love each other? The report card that we receive is about love, right? Thankfully, it's not about a good call swing because not getting into heaven if that's what it's about. Um, anyway, that's, no, no. Maybe, maybe the better... Not a good ballet performance. You're not going to see me perfecting the ballet anytime soon. Um, it's a question of how can you, as a human being, trans as a human being, transformed by the love of Christ, share that love with your neighbor, because that is good. <coughs> One of the other things that God's toe or God's goodness does is resist evil. Right? Good and evil are opposites of each other. God spells out that there are depths to his goodness, and there is an offer to the opposite. The tree at the center of the, the garden story is the tree of good and evil, or tov and ra, uh, ra being the word for evil. Part of being good is resisting ra, and ra, or evil, is the negative good. It's the opposite of what leads to flourishing in life. Every time Israel decides to go against God's toe or God's goodness, they pursue the raw. 
and they end up in some sort of calamity where it leads to further and further dysfunction in their own lives and the life of the community. Pursuing Ra leads to destruction. Pursuing Tov leads to flourishing. This is what this, what, this is what the psalmist in Psalm 34 is getting at. Taste and see that the Lord is good. If you find refuge in Him, you're pursuing that goodness. <coughs> so what does it look like to pursue Tov? What does it look like to pursue goodness? Um, I think, uh, shockingly, I think that the greatest example we have is the life of Jesus. Um, I know, newsflash. Um, there are specifically two chapters in Matthew that highlight this. Um, and so in Matthew verses uh, chapter 6 and 7, end of 5, um, is the Sermon on the Mount. It's where uh, Jesus is telling us what it looks like to live in his kingdom and what it means to have this kingdom. In, verse, in chapter 7 is where we get uh, the, the Lord gives good gifts to us. And then in the following two chapters, chapters 8 and 9, uh, Matthew spends some time highlighting what Jesus does. So Jesus is just taught, and now Jesus goes into action mode. And so Matthew spends his time detailing what it does. Jesus does eight miracles, in, in, well, eight stories of miracles in chapters 8 and 9. There's actually more than eight miracles. But he is doing what goodness is. He is setting wrong things right. He's restoring the world. He's loving the neighbors. And he's resisting evil. So we get this picture in Matthew 8, 14 through 17. It says, when Jesus arrived at Peter's house, Peter's mother-in-law was sick in bed with a high fever. But when Jesus touched her hand, the fever left her. Then she got up and prepared a meal for him. That evening, many demon-possessed people were brought to Jesus. He cast out the evil spirits with a simple command, and he healed all the sick. This fulfilled the word of the Lord, and the prophet Isaiah said, He took our sickness and removed our diseases. Jesus is providing good things to the people he loves. He is healing disease and removing evil. And the work of Jesus here is good work. It's work that Jesus is uniquely called to as he is called good by his Father. But is that, that does not mean that we should not be engaging in this work as well. We should be seeking to resist evil and provide good things as we are able we should listen to Micah 6 8, which says, No, O the people of the Lord. <coughs> no, O people, the Lord has told you what is tow, what is good. And this is what he requires of you to do what is right, to love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. Um, to do what is right or just in, in maybe your translation. And then the prophet Amos says in 5 14 through 15, do what is tov, do what is good, and run from evil so that you may live. Then the Lord of God's heaven's armies will be your helper, just as you have claimed. Hate evil, hate raw, and love what is good, love what is tov. Turn your courts into true halls of justice. Perhaps even yet the Lord God of heaven's armies will have mercy on the remnants of his people. Doing good, or being good is not just optional for us as Jesus followers. If God is good, then doing good should be part of our DNA. It should be what we strive for. Now, it is a journey for us. Um, I am aware that anyone who has committed their life to Christ and to follow his footsteps have had a few missteps. But if we are going to be a Jesus people, then doing good and being good are important things driven by the love that we have for one another and our neighbors. The power of the Spirit is there to help you create goodness, to create tov. <coughs> it will be very hard to do it on your own. It has to be by the power of the Spirit. 
um, the question then becomes, if we are supposed to be a good people, and the church is the gathering of Jesus, and it's the community that's gathered and called in Jesus' name, then what does it mean to have a church that is tough, or a church that is good? And so, this is the cliffhanger of the, the episode. Um, join us next week um, as we dive into what it means for our church to be tough, to be good. We join you in prayer. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you that you love us <coughs> and care for us. That you have promised us lands flowing with milk and honey. You've promised good things to us. You've promised good gifts to us. And so we ask that you continue to show us your goodness, that we would be made aware of it, that we would be made aware of the good things that we can do, how we can walk humbly with you and seek what is right. We ask for these things in your precious name. Amen. Amen. I invite you all to stand one last time as we end our Sunday service. benediction verse for this morning is from Ephesians 
Instead, we are God's accomplishment, created in Christ Jesus to do good things. God planned for those good things to be the way we live our lives. Lord, we ask that you send us out to do good things, that you remind us that you are good and that you have good things for us. In your name we pray. Amen. Have a great and wonderful week. Go in peace and love.